Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're back. Happy Sabbath from me. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Yes, yeah, so we're here today to do the blessing of the sacrament, and I hope you've got your emblems and your wine or water ready. And uh, so I will read. Oh, I'll get Carl to say an opening prayer first. So if you could do that, Carl. Okay. Heavenly Father, we are so happy to be here this morning to share this sacrament blessing with you. I ask thee also to keep in your minds and hearts this day the terrible tragedy that has recently unfolded in Australia and to pray for the families and the bereaved of all those who have died. I ask you to think of them in your prayers today. And I say this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah, terrible things happening in our world. And we pray that things will get better. Hopefully when the Lord returns, things will get better, as we read in the Bible. So I'm going to say the prayer for the for the bread, and Kai will say the prayer for the wine. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to His mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you like to kneel or bow. As you can. O oh God the Eternal Father, we ask thee in the name of thy Son Jesus Christ to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God, the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments, which he have given them, that they may always have his Spirit, to be with them. Amen. Amen. Kai will now say the prayer for the wine. If you're ready, you can bow and kneel. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee, in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it that they may do it in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Blessings everyone. My name is Wednesday Jones and this is my testimony of the Book of Mormon. I am a convert to the Restoration, so the Book of Mormon was new to me. I had heard about it and I had held one before that I saw in the drawer of a Marriott hotel room as a child, but I didn't open it until I took an interest in the Restoration as an adult. Um, at the time I encountered the Restoration, I was sort of ag agnostic. I grew up mainline Protest in a mainline Protestant denomination, but had grown disillusioned. 
I was introduced to Mormonism through people who were deconstructing from the belief, um, ex-Mormons and post-Mormons. Naturally, the first things I saw about it were uh, debunking um, uh, its so-called location that it take place, and as well as debunking the historicity or um, who the uh, book was claiming to be authored by. Uh, but my mind was being open to new possibilities that I hadn't considered before. Uh, when I was younger, it didn't make sense to me that there would be no more scripture from God, that the author of Revelations could say, that's it, for scripture, as I heard some argue before. I wondered why God interacted so directly with those in ancient times and why such things wouldn't occur with us now today. Eventually, I was curious enough to acquire a Book of Mormon along with the Doctrine and Covenants and uh, um, an inspired version of the Bible. Um, and uh, I, was, I was cautious when I approached the Book of Mormon, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I knew what the book said about a skin of blackness and how that had led to the mistreatment of black and indigenous persons in different parts of the Latter-day Saint movement. I was also fairly certain that the Book of Mormon was a 19th century text. I knew that neither of these things discounted the book as scripture. Neither of these things uh, discounted the book as being divinely inspired. Um, the only way I would know that is to read it and to pray over it myself. So I went into the scripture without the burden of historicity and author authenticity, not to see if the book was holy and literally true, but to seek after the truths within, the same I would do with the Bible. I approached the text and I looked for the presence of God. I prayed and asked God to guide me in my reading of the scriptures. Millions before me found these precious truths and divine inspiration in this book, and I thought perhaps if I went in openly, I could find it myself. And did I, and I'm glad that I did. The Book of Mormon provides further light on issues the Christ Christian community uh, was facing at the time. It seeks to heal and to unify divisions. A theme throughout the scripture and, be and the bringing forth of the Book of Mormon speaks of continuing revelation. The heavens were open then and are open now. From what I learned, there is no reason why God wouldn't provide us further light or would limit who God delivers divine knowledge to. In fact, I learned that God does just that. It's just up to us to ask, to listen, and to discern. The Book of Mormon has also strengthened my relationship with my creator. When I was a child, I thought deeply about and questioned the theology and doctrine I was taught in Sunday school. Sometimes this questioning wasn't always welcome. Uh, and I learned then that for some, ignorance is preferable to doubt. This doesn't work for me. When I know that I'm ignorant in something, it just leads to more doubt um, on my ability to make a decision or um, a rational claim about it. Uh, the Book of Mormon, however, encourages me to be a diligent seeker. My time spent studying the Book of Mormon has been filled with questions, questions without shame that I encouraged that that encouraged me to seek after God's truth. Much like Nephi, I was desirous that I might see and hear and know of these things by the power of the Holy Ghost, which is the gift of God to all those who diligently seek him as well in the times of old, as in the time that he should manifest himself unto the children of men. For he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, and um, still reading from uh, the Book of Mormon, for he that diligently seeks shall find, and the mysteries of God shall be unfolded to him by the power of the Holy Ghost, as well in this time as in times of old and as well in times of old as in times to come. Um, and this is coming from the first book of Nephi and chapter. This scripture 
inspires me and shows me that God wants me to seek after God's mysteries and the mysteries in the universe God created for us. And that thought for me is absolutely liberating. Uh, we should not fear knowledge. God wants us to grow and to understand. And my faith is stronger now with this understanding. Questioning and seeking is needed for spiritual growth. I find the Book of Mormon to be empowering and reminding me of my moral agency, encouraging me to grow in my faith and to work with God to hone my spiritual gifts to be used in service to the divine and to my community. The Book of Mormon affirms the living Christ, Christ's love for all humankind, no matter where and who they are, and that people of all nations receive light from the divine and are a part of God's sacred story. And there is so much more. The Book of Mormon speaks to me about the effects of poverty and addressing wealth inequity. This matches up with Christ's mission to tend to the poor. The Book of Mormon goes into how we should live amongst each other and on building sacred community, um, on how to be Zion as a people. There are so many lessons back packed in there that I believe God wants us to ponder on and to take action with. The Book of Mormon is responsible for changing the way that I read and apply sacred scripture to my life. This has changed my life for the better and changed my life outlook. I see myself as an active part of God's plan, actively carrying out Christ's mission. I thank God for the restoration. I thank God for continuing revelation and for the Book of Mormon. And I thank God for my community, the people of Zion. So, brothers and sisters, as we finish up now, we ask that the Spirit of the Lord be with you for this week. And I also say a little blessing for me. So. And as we, we can pray a blessing on Carl. So, Heavenly Father, we ask that your Spirit be with us now as we pray for Kyle, who's, who's going through some more, will need more surgery. And we pray that you can take the pain away and help him to get better. So we will add Carl to our prayers on a Thursday night, well, into our book. So I say these things in closing in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.